I wanted to show some of the things I've been doing with the Apple II lately. So I said in the last video that the next thing I was going to try to do was to get it to talk to the outside world. And I had two cards to help me do that. Uh, the card on the left is a super serial card, which is basically an RS-232 interface based on the 6551 processor, which is part of the 6502 family. And the card on the right is a much more modern card, an Ethernet 2. So this is an Ethernet card for the uh, old slot-based Apple II computers. The serial card would seem like the easier and more natural way to do things. Certainly, uh, it is more period authentic. But you know, I hate RS-232. I hated RS-232 in the 1980s and I hate it now. I did spend a little time trying to make the RS-232 card work with the whole variety of uh, 9-pin to 25-pin adapters, null modem cables, gender changers, and the rest of it, and I haven't actually made it work yet. So uh, I just sort of gave up on that for the moment. I'll do it sometime soon, but it's not been working for me. And in the meantime, I really wanted to try out the Ethernet card instead. So here's the card inside the Apple II, um, uh, installed in slot 3 here. It's a pretty small card because, of course, it's a modern card, so it's using high-density surface mount components. So it's a little funny in some ways that the RS-232 card is this size and the Ethernet card is that size, given the relative uh, complexity of the jobs they're doing. Um, the board has an Ethernet port on it here, which um, slightly awkwardly points towards the keyboard. Um, so, so I've got a cable installed in that um, and then running out through a hole in the back of the computer. So normally when you wanted to use just a small cable like that, you would use a sort of regular patch cable, um, you know, like this one. The problem with these is they're sort of, they're quite thick, they're quite um, stiff and so a little awkward in the small space. So I found these other cables. I actually really love these to use uh, when I just want to connect two devices together very quickly. Um, super Super thin, uh, super twisty, uh, much easier to work with. These come from a company called uh, Monoprice, I think. I'll put a link in the video description. Um, I, you know, I just got a batch of these, and they're really useful for all sorts of purposes. So that runs there, runs out, um, and then at the back, I'm using one of these. Uh, you know, this is a little device just to um, uh, connect two uh, Ethernet cables together. So essentially, I'm using it as an Ethernet port. So, so I have my cable, um, or I have it connected into this th this thing, and essentially gives me um, a female Ethernet jack on the back of the computer, and that's running out down here to uh, to my uh, to my switch. So of course an Ethernet card is only half the story. We also need some software. So what I've got loaded here on this disk is the IP65 system. Um, IP65 is a TCP IP implementation that runs on a number of different 6502 computers and is ported to the uh, support for the Ethernet 2 card. The Ethernet card actually has TCP IP on board, and I think this is using the TCP IP that's on board the card. Um, but what it provides is a software library so that uh, you can write uh, IP applications and it comes with uh, with a couple on it so for instance if I just run um, date 65 here what that does is it's going to go out um, and um, you can see it finds the slot, it initializes, it runs DHCP to get an IP address, um, and then it resolves the time and date from a network, date, network time server. So uh, that's us you know, running an IP application, connecting this 1983 computer out onto the internet. Um, let's try something else. If I type, if I run telnet65 here, um, then again it will get itself an Ethernet address and I can connect to a Telnet server um, dot, I happen to know the IP address I want. This is a computer inside my house and it doesn't have a separate DHCP or it doesn't have a separate DNS name which is why I have to use the IP address um, and then I can log in to a Raspberry Pi. Um, 
And of course, from there, I can, you know, connect out onto the internet as well using more secure protocols than Telnet. Telnet's a pretty horrid old protocol, um, but the Apple II is never going to manage the encryption I need for, for SSH or for something like that. Um, so this is this is great and it's a lot of fun and in fact there's also um, some web browsing software on here um, and indeed a web server that I'll show you in a second. But I want to show you something else which is actually the primary way I've been making use of this. So what I'm booting here is ADT Pro um, and that's a very well known uh, software package that copies disk images uh, over onto an Apple II and it can copy across a serial connection and um, it'll even copy across an audio port so as if it were reading it from a cassette but ADT Pro the more recent versions also have support for this Ethernet card and so we can um, tell it that we want to uh, copy files across the Ethernet and my Mac laptop there is set up to run the server. So for instance, if I do uh, ask it for a directory, um, it will uh, pull up all the, all the um, disk images that I have uh, got loaded, loaded on there. Um, and we can, we can tell it we want to uh, make a disk. So I have a disk here that I've already formatted that into drive two tell ADT Pro we want to receive. I'm going to give it no file name and it will give me the list and let's um, let's do Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. So uh, it's just checking what um, where we want to copy it to. Here's the disk I'm going to copy it onto. So, so we just say select that one um, and then it uh, downloads the file over the Ethernet connection. So this is so much faster than running it over a serial line and um, unbelievably much faster than running it over the audio port so that we can uh, download the entire 140K disk image really pretty quickly. Um, it just takes a minute or so, um, downloads it in various segments and writes it to the disk bit by bit, block by block. You can hear it make those satisfying sounds of progress. Um, and then this is the this is the last set of data here. Um, and now we now we have it. So we should be able to take that disk, put it into drive one, and then boot from it. We often get some funny sounds out of these disks that um, whether someone's had to break the copy protection. Uh, 80 columns, yes. And sure enough, here is uh, Infocom's text adventure, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, uh, running there just now off from that disk that we, uh, that we just downloaded. Um, there's one more thing I want to, this is a very useful feature. Um, there's one more thing I want to show you, which is uh, really not useful at all. In fact, it's very silly, but it is kind of fun. So I've booted the IP65 disk again. But this time I want to run a different program, which is called HFS65. And HFS stands for HTTP file server. So this is basically a web server that's running here on the on the Apple IIe. So it says it's got its IP address and it started this server. Um, and so now if I connect to that address, from my laptop, you hear the disks spin as it checks what files are, are available. And then on here, I am now uh, browsing and I can look at, look at the, uh, here's the ProDOS disk. So, so you can see how over here, I am like loading the files from over there. So it's pr again, pretty much the, uh, the world's slowest IP, uh, slowest uh, web server. Um, 
and I haven't I should punch a hole in my firewalls so that I can do this from outside the house because that would be pretty cool um, but if ADT Pro was my way of downloading files from over here to over there um, I can also go back again uh, using the file server on here I think it's a pretty uh, not a terribly useful way of transferring files but it is pretty cool